Hello everyone, it's Corporal Hot Pockets, and I want to show you my new and improved 3D printed UNSC fleet. Two years ago I made a video about these ships, and you guys absolutely loved it. So I'm going to go over my expanded fleet with better detail and video quality. Hope you enjoy. The actual fleet, all the ships meant to be to scale with each other, is this, and is built around the Punic class supercarrier UNSC Leviathan II, and having nine other capital ships and a whole bunch of frigates around it. I imagine this to be an expeditionary fleet, carrying a marine expeditionary force and going on the offensive against the enemies of the UNSC. As said before, the fleet is built around the supercarrier, both tactically speaking but also literally, as the Punic was the max size my 3D printer could make at the time, so everything was scaled around that. She's a colossal vessel, 4,000 meters long, with a very robust and strong frame. As a supercarrier of the UNSC fleet, she balances the duties of a command ship for large fleets, troop and aircraft transport due to her massive size, and frontline combat against other ships thanks to her very heavy armament. She has two Supermax, those things on the UNSC Infinity or the ODP stations we see at Earth or Reach, loads of secondary coil guns including the awesome breakwaters that I just did a short on, missiles, nukes, and everything else. The coolest aspect though, in my opinion, is the massive storage beds. As some of you may know, the Infinity has an internal storage bay for 10 frigates. The Punic has something similar, 4 beds for frigates to attach to externally. While they are not fully inside, they are still very closely attached, probably used for ease or transport of troops and supplies. Mine broke, but you can see this massive strut that connects to the frigates. And when I say strut, I mean a nearly 2 kilometer long metal column basically two Burj Khalifas sideways. And something that I didn't really understand before building this fleet is the raw size difference between the various ships. We only really see frigates in the games, maybe occasionally something bigger, but rarely are they together so you can compare sizes directly. So seeing them together really puts to scale how big these big ships are. I knew the Punic was about 8 times longer than the Paris class frigate, but I had no clue how that translated in terms of raw bulk or girth. Her rear engine cone alone is taller than these frigates, let alone her width or her height. The scary thing is, the UNSC probably built about a dozen of these, plus hundreds of carriers, hundreds of cruisers, and probably thousands of frigates and destroyers. Next up, the Epoch class heavy carrier is the second largest and most important ship in my fleet, and acts as a secondary command vessel. The Epoch was the workhorse UNSC flagship, seen commanding most mid-war battle groups. She can be thought of as a mini Punic in tactical functions. She too balances command, carrying ability, and ship combat, and she also has a pair of breakwaters at her prow. Watch this fantastic video by Gamma Company Mark on the Epoch in greater detail. What I find interesting about the Epoch is that she also has a strut near her bow that looks similar to the Punix. I couldn't fit a Paris class frigate in there, but maybe some of the smaller ones, like the Stalwart, might be able to dock inside. And up next, what invasion fleet could be complete without the legendary Phoenix class? Now I know that the Spirit of Fire was a one-off colony ship conversion, and the UNSC's main assault carrier was the Orion class, but I didn't have the model for her back then, and I really liked the Phoenix anyway. So I'll just say that more colony ships were modified and added to the fleet. If you want a full breakdown of the Phoenix's tactical employment, I made a video on that. But in short, these are not frontline combat vessels, but instead use their weapons for supporting their massive ground contingent, and supply them with their huge warehouses and robotic factory. This is where the bulk of the marine force will be, but I'll break down the troop allocation near the end. Ah, now for the cruisers, the workhorse of the fleet, and 60% of my capital ships. Wait. 60%. 60% 60 of the UNSC fleet is en route to reach from existing deployments. Yeah, I've only spoken about four ships so far. Anyway, the fleet has two Valiants and four Halcyons or Autumns, depending on the period. Sadly, I did not have the model for the marathon at the time. Sorry for the voice change, I'm a little bit sick, but the model that I'm using for the Valiant is the old Sins of the Prophets variant that has been decanonized and I believe has been adapted into the Thanatos class battleship. I didn't have the current canon model at the time, so I had to print this, and I'll be honest, I do like this and the old non-canon Punic designs more than the current ones, and I wish that they could be adapted somehow into Halo lore just like they have in Sins of the Prophets. The Valiants have much greater firepower, two cruiser max of the Halcyons 1, plus more nukes and missiles, but their main purpose is secondary command ships, like the Epoch. The Valiant has the firepower of a heavy cruiser, with the command and sensor suites of a supercarrier, thus the name, Super Heavy Cruiser. This made them very expensive for cruisers, but very fast and nimble compared to most carriers, and were liked by some of humanity's greatest admirals for their mix of qualities, including Admiral Cole, who personally modified his cruiser, the Everest, to a great extent to make him even more versatile. The Halcyon was a more rudimentary cruiser, used for ship-to-ship -ship combat, but also had a noteworthy hull of impressive durability, and a large internal storage capacity. And finally, the frigates. As you can see, there are two types. The greens are the stridents, which is what they look like in full detail.
and the blues are meant to be parishes, as you can see here, but in truth they're so small they could pass for any of the other twin boom frigates without much resizing needed. They're used for fleet support, with the stridents used for ship-to-ship -ship combat, parishes used for that, as well as carrying fighters, charons used to ferry troops to planets thanks to their massive internal capacity, but have the weakest armor and weapons, and the strident balances most of these, but focuses most on anti-fighter defense. Overall, these small ships make up the bulk of the fleet. The rough organization is this, three task forces for frontline combat, and one task force held in reserve. The frontline task forces take up the Epoch-class carrier and all the cruisers, with the carrier and two Halcyon cruisers in one task force, and a valiant Halcyon pair for the other two, with each task force being rounded out by eight stridents and eight parasites, which as I said could be placeholders for charons or stalwarts if you want them to be. These are the main combat elements of the fleet, used to destroy enemy ships and clear the lane for troops. The reserve task force is a looser collection of the two Phoenix-class assault carriers, each with a group of four frigates, and the supercarrier, with eight. The two assault carriers being in the rear makes sense, sending out their troops on the frigates or moving into target worlds once the space around them is secure, but the supercarrier is held here in reserve. It can of course join the frontline task forces if needed, but wouldn't needlessly risk itself, instead staying one system away if a particular engagement by the frontline task forces escalated and they needed reinforcements. Supercarriers are not only loaded with thousands of troops, pilots, and skilled crew, but the ships themselves are virtually irreplaceable. So if she goes down, the whole fleet is screwed. As for the troops, this one is a bit nuanced, so I'll try to be brief. UNSC ships, even small ones, have relatively large complements of aircraft, troops, and even vehicles. The Autumn had over a battalion of marine infantry, while all the marines, vehicles, and guns on Delta Halo fit inside the In Amber Clad. At first glance, it seems unwise to have hundreds or even thousands of marines on your warship at all times when you're expecting to fight other ships. What I think is the situation is that most of the time, marines would be with their parent units, either on a base planet side or on larger cell carriers. They would then be transferred on board frigates or cruisers in small numbers on specific missions, ideally after a major space engagement, after which they'd return back to their parent units. UNSC vessels would still have troops in other circumstances, such as smaller numbers of troops to repel borders, or detachments when on patrol, where they might get a distress signal from a colony and need to head there immediately with whatever they have on board. But as a generality, I don't think UNSC ships are stuffed with marines and tanks when engaging in large naval battles. And with that, I'd have a marine expeditionary force split relatively evenly between the supercarrier and the two assault carriers. A MEF contains a marine division, combat logistics brigade, marine air wing, and small command element. The division is about 15 to 20,000 marines, which make up most of the ground troops, combat vehicles, and artillery. It would also have an ODST battalion attached. For more details on UNSC infantry tactics, check out this video. The Combat Logistics Brigade is all of the support and sustainment troops needed for a large unit, which is about 5 to 6,000 troops. The Marine Air Wing is a collection of atmospheric aircraft used by the marines to support their ground troops and would concentrate heavily in the two assault carriers. If you want an in-depth breakdown on marine and army aviation and the difference between naval and marine aircraft on navy ships, check this video out. Even cooler, the MEF has the ability to split off smaller self-contained units that mirror its structure. A MEB, which is one subunit down, is about 10 to 15,000 and is built around regiments, while MUs, two subunits down, are about 2,000 to 2,500 and are built around battalions. These forces can be quickly assembled from their parent units, sent off independently from the rest of the fleet while still having everything they need to accomplish their mission, after which they return back to the fleet and get reabsorbed. All of this is still technically speculation as it is not explicitly confirmed by the lore. However, there are numerous references to this specific structure, and considering that the UNSC is a direct evolution of the modern US military, and this is how the USMC deploys on the larger scale, it's likely that this is how the UNSC Marine Corps also deploys when doing larger invasions. As said in my ground combat video, most UNSC Marine Corps deployments are on a much smaller scale, with small battle groups made up of company to battalion sized infantry units, heavily reinforced by multi-role aviation and ground vehicles, attached to individual ships or small fleets, with those ships and their crew providing the major sustainments that these small battle groups need. This is a far too complex and far too interesting topic to just leave at that. So I will be starting my first multi-episode series, where I will be going in-depth over UNSC infantry tactics and ground combat. I've teased it for months, and you folks have repeatedly confirmed it in poll after poll, both on YouTube and Discord, so it's high time I formally announce it. Now for the finale. Thank you all so much for watching and joining my channel, and special thanks to Gamma Company Mark for the shoutout. I'm so glad to see that you guys have been enjoying my ships as much as I have, and that there are so many fans of Halo's military aspects, and I wish to deliver more on this tragically underrepresented market. And, as is tradition, remember to hit that big red button to eradicate all the Xenos, then hit the Liberty Bell to replace him with America. Just as the Founding Fathers intended.
This has been Corporal Hot Pockets, showing you what the ladies like, one lesson at a time. Keep riding forward onto Don Spartans.